Hey, it's Cindy again. We're down in Module 12 now, and we're going to talk in this module about working with sales tax. This would be sales tax that you've actually put on an invoice and your customers paid you for it. You're going to have to actually set it up correctly so that QuickBooks knows which customers get taxed and which ones don't. It has to know which items get taxed and which ones don't, and also what the different taxes are that you're collecting. Let me go ahead and take you over into this first section and I'm going to show you all about how to set up the sales tax so that you do end up invoicing your customers correctly. If you collect sales tax in your organization, you will need to forward it to the proper entity. The way sales tax works is typically you're going to collect the tax for the county you're delivering the items to. If you have a storefront and people come to you, you just charge the one tax rate in your county. But if you're actually delivering items or shipping them out to other counties, you need to know what county your customer is in so you can charge that rate. A sales tax rate might seem like one number, but it's actually made up of several little taxes. That's because what happens is the voters in that county vote on those individual taxes. Even though two counties may have the same rate, they could be different taxes in those groups. Let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to go to Items and Services, and if you go to the very bottom of the list, here's the sales tax items they had set up for the practice file. You'll see they have three, and each one has a different rate, and then they have a sales tax group, which is accumulation of those three. Here's why you want to do this. You want to break these out so that when you forward the tax to the proper entity, it's going to ask you how much goes to this one, how much goes to this one, and so forth. But if you ever look on an invoice, the only place that you can actually put a sales tax is right here where it says tax. You can't fit all of those individual ones into this one field. The way it works is once you create the individual taxes, then you create a sales tax group and you tell it these taxes go in that group. You always pick the group right here and it will charge your customer correctly. Let's go set a couple of these up so you can see how this works. I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose new. The first thing I'll want to do is choose sales tax item from this list. If you don't see these two options, it's because you told QuickBooks when you set up your company file that you don't charge sales tax and now you're doing it. You can always turn these on in the preferences. I always start with the state tax first. It really doesn't matter, but that's just my little thing that I do. I'm going to go ahead and put in here state tax, and every county charges the same rate for that tax. Now I'm going to put in here the Department of Revenue. That's going to be my vendor. It will let you leave this blank, but don't do it because when you look at a report, it will group the blank ones in a separate place on the report. I'm going to click OK, and now you'll see there's the state tax that we just set up, and it's at 6%. Now I have two counties that I want to set up. Let me go ahead and set up county number one first. I'm going to go ahead and say new. And let's say in this county they charge a total of 8%. And let's say that the second item they charge is a transportation tax. I'll just call it trans. And in this particular case, they charge 1%. And again, it goes to the Department of Revenue. Now you can see both of them right there. Now let's say I want to edit this. And I want to call it trans 1 for transportation 1. I'll right click and edit that and just add a 1 at the end of it like that and click OK. Now we'll go ahead and set up the other one. They also charge in this particular county 1% for what they call a local tax. I'll call this local tax number one and I'll go ahead and say that this particular one is 1% and it goes to the Department of Revenue. Now what I can do is I can right click and make a group from those three taxes. I'm going to go to new and this time I'll go ahead and create a sales tax group. I'm going to name this group one 
and I'm going to go down where the tax items are and pick all the items that go in this group. I'm going to say sales tax, that's my 6%. I'll do local tax 1, and I'll do transportation 1. See how that's 8%? Now let me go ahead and set up the other one for you so you can see how this works. It'll be the same thing. I've already got the state tax in, so I don't have to set that up again. So I'll just go to New, and I'm going to do a sales tax item, and I'm going to call it local tax 2. Let's say that it's a half a percent, and let's say it goes to the Department of Revenue. If I click OK, now I'm going to have two of those. Now let me create one more group. I'm going to right click and choose New. I'm going to choose a sales tax group. I'm going to call this one Group 2, and then I'll have the state tax in here, and I'll also have the local tax too. See how that's 6.5%? And then I'll click OK. The two groups are the ones I'll be pulling onto actual invoices. I'm going to go back to Home because there's actually a second part to this. We've set up the taxes now. The second part is that certain items are taxable and others aren't. If I go back and look at the items list again, I'm just going to pick a couple of these just to show you. Typically, a service you provide is not taxable. I'm going to go ahead and look at the floor plan, so I'll just double click. And here's where you would tell QuickBooks if your item is taxable or not. And you can see it's not in this case because it's a service I provide. Let me go down and see an inventory part. I'll look at cabinets here, custom cabinets. And if you look at this one, notice it is taxable. So that's the second part. You have to tell QuickBooks which items are taxable and which ones are not. The last part to this is you have to tell QuickBooks which customers are taxable and which ones aren't, and if they are taxable, which tax do they get charged. Let me go to the customer setup and we'll look at a couple of these. Let's say we take our first person in the list here, Mr. Burroughs. I'm going to double click so we can edit. And the third tab down says Sales Tax Settings. This is where you tell QuickBooks that this customer does get charged sales tax. And this is where you tell it which tax he gets charged. Remember, you're picking a group. Resale number, all that is, is if I sell chairs in my store and you come to me and buy chairs in my store that you want to turn around and put in your store to sell, you can actually apply to the state for a tax exempt certificate. And if you present that to me, I can plug it in here in case I get audited and I'll have it. Let's go ahead and change one more customer. We're going to change Tom Allen. We're going to go to the sales tax settings. Notice he's taxable. We'll put him in local tax one as far as his tax item and click OK. This will not go and change any existing invoices. It's only ones you create for future reference. Let's go ahead and go back to home. We're going to create two invoices and we can see how this works. My first customer was Ken Burroughs. And if you notice, it automatically picked group one. See that? I'm going to go ahead and just pick something. I'm going to pick framing. Remember, that's a service. So see how it says non-taxable over here? That's what that means. I'll go ahead and say there were 10 of those. And then on the second line, I'm going to pick the exterior wood door. And notice that this one is taxable. I'll just do one of these. So QuickBooks is charging 8% tax but it's only charging the tax on the wood door and not the framing. Let me go ahead and add one more, save and new, and I'll pick Tom Allen. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I just want to pick something from the list. Let's say I pick that same wood door, and that's an exterior wood door. I'm going to invoice him for two of these, and notice it does charge sales tax on the door. Now I noticed something when I looked at this one. I've got the same tax rate for this guy. I need to go ahead and pick the local tax too, and I'm going to save and close. Since I changed that, it's going to ask me would I like to change it in Tom Allen's record. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, and now it's changed. Once you actually have all the taxes set up, you'll want to go ahead and run some reports because you'll need to actually pay those taxes 
to the proper entities. Let's go ahead and stop the video right here and I'm going to have you guys go into section two with me and we'll finish up all the stuff about sales tax. Once you've invoiced for the entire month, then you'll want to go ahead and see how much you owe and forward that money to the appropriate entity. I know in my state it all goes to the same place, our Department of Revenue. I understand in some other states though that they go to different entities. So check with your state and see where you need to forward your money. I'm going to go ahead and show you a report that you can run to see how much you owe. First of all, you can get to it under reports. We briefly looked at this, but notice that if you go down here you're going to see some reports under vendors and payables that say sales tax liability. Another way to get to this report, if you notice, there's a whole icon here that says Manage Sales Tax. Here's the same sales tax liability report. Let me go ahead and pull that up. When you're looking at this report, always check your dates. Make sure you've got an entire month in there. The two invoices we just created were in December, so I'm going to change this to December 1 to December 31. In real life, you're not going to see this part. That's for the practice exercise and this as well. So really, this right here is what you'll see. Notice that's exactly what we just set up. There's our two local taxes, the state tax and the transportation. You don't see the group name in here. You see the individual tax name. The reason for this is because when you forward this money, you're going to have to also fill out a sales tax form that tells the Department of Revenue how much you collected per tax. You can see here it tells me the total of the sales, how much of those sales were non-taxable, how much were taxable, the rate, and the tax collected. When you go through and you fill out your form, this is the amount of money you're aiming for right here, not this last column. This is how much you collected. You will get a little discount if you pay it on time maybe something like one or two percent so the number could be a little bit lower now if the number is higher you need to figure out why sometimes what happens is you might buy some purchases from out of state and you have to report those purchases if that's the case then this might be a little bit higher but if it says you collected 10 and it says you owe 100 for some reason then something's wrong Use this report when you're filling out your sales tax reports for the month. In my state, the taxes are due by the 20th of the following month. You're okay if you pay them on time, but if you pay them late, then it will figure out a little penalty. In my state also, we have to go online now and fill out the sales tax report for the month and make the payment. They do not let us use a paper form anymore to do this. Once you've done all that, then you have to actually go in QuickBooks and tell it that you've written the check, so to speak, for the liability that you just paid online. What you're going to do is go back to your Manage Sales Tax, and notice here it says Pay Sales Tax. What you're going to do is you're going to check off each of the taxes you're going to pay. Now, I don't see the ones we set up here, because check the sales tax due through date. I want to make it December 31 and then click down here and now you'll see them appear. See them right here? You want to check them all off and you're going to put over to the right how much you're paying for that particular tax. If you're getting a little discount you're going to have to look online and see what that discounted amount is. This should be the total you're going to pay right here. If you get a discount that means the next month it's still going to say you owe those few pennies from the last month. You can adjust those if you need to at any point. I'm just going to click OK, and by the way, let me look at this. I'm going to make the check date in January, so January 11th. I'm going to click OK, and then let's flip over to the register and see if we see it here. I'm going to look on January the 11th, and there it is. Department of Revenue, it's a tax payment, and it's split amongst multiple accounts. That's what you have to do if you're working with sales tax. We're going to go ahead now and wrap up Module 12, and let's move over to Module 13 and talk about payroll. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel so you get notified of new videos that we upload. Click over there to get a free two-hour course to learn the essentials of QuickBooks 2018. And click over there to get the complete 
list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.